Being compliant is just straightforward. Being maliciously compliant? Well, that's another story. Welcome to this episode of Malicious Compliance. Our first one is from FunPin9061. So this happened a while back, but the memory still brings a smirk to my face whenever I think about it. I used to work for a company where the boss had this habit of demanding that we stay late, even when there was absolutely no work left to be done. It was one of those toxic environments where productivity was measured by the hours you spent at your desk rather than the actual output of your work. One day, after wrapping up all my tasks well before the end of the day, my boss came over and told me that I needed to stay late because that's just how things are done around here. Mind you, there was literally nothing left for me to do. Now, instead of arguing or trying to reason with him, I decided to play along with his ridiculous demand for overtime pay. I nodded, grabbed a book I had been meaning to read, and settled back into my chair. For the next two hours, I sat at my desk, flipping through pages, occasionally pretending to jot down notes, and looking as busy as possible. At the end of those two hours, my boss came by to check on me, expecting to see me toiling away at some imaginary task. Instead, he found me reading a novel. He looked puzzled and asked, What are you doing? With a straight face, I replied, Well, you asked me to stay late, so I figured I might as well put in some overtime. This book has been on my reading list for a while. Needless to say, my boss was speechless. He couldn't really argue with me since he had asked me to stay late and I was technically still on the clock. From that day forward, he never asked me to stay late unless there was actual work to be done. Malicious compliance at its finest. If there's absolutely no work to do and the boss doesn't come up with anything to give the worker, what is the worker supposed to do? Just sit there and stack papers endlessly? Rearrange pencils on their desk? They complied beautifully and maliciously, and I really hope they got paid for it. This next one is by Mrs. Knockers 81 a bit of backstory, I divorced my ex a little over 9 years ago after 14 years of marriage. I won't go into the specifics as to why, but suffice to say, he was a lying, cheating jerk. Early on during the marriage, I tended not to be all that assertive, until I finally had my fill and grew a backbone. He hated that. He did not like hearing the word no from me, or in doing things my own way. So fast forward to a month after we were officially divorced. He was in his new place and I was in my house, formerly the house we shared, with our sons, but he still had a ton of his stuff there. Stuff I didn't even want, though I paid a lot for it, but stuff I knew he really wanted. He finally reached out and demanded, not asked, demanded, I send him his stuff. Just toss it all in boxes and send it over to him. His exact words. Mind you, he was only about 10 miles away from me at that point and could have easily come over to do it himself. He didn't want to do that because he'd have to see me, something he was actively trying not to do. Cue the malicious compliance. Now, a lot of what he had were collectibles. No details, but some of it was fairly expensive and fragile. So, I did as he asked. Correction. Demanded. I tossed it all into numerous boxes. Now, some of the truly expensive items, I did take great care in packing them. Only because I knew my sons would probably eventually want them. But for the stuff I knew my ex really wanted and care a lot about? Nah, I just tossed it all in a box without a care in the world. Now I did inspect everything and, while I just dumped them in boxes, nothing was damaged by me. I also took pictures of it to prove it. So once I closed them all up, I told him to either get his ass over to pick it up or get someone to do it for him. He got someone to do it. Now, I was not at the house when this person picked everything up, but my sons and sister were. They did not know how everything was packed. They only showed him the boxes. They told me that the person who picked up the boxes quite literally just tossed them into the back of his pickup without a care in the world and then sped away. Later that night, I got a call from my ex who started calling me a bitch for destroying all his stuff. 
I told him that everything was fine before I closed the boxes up, and I had proof of it. I then said that maybe next time be a bit nicer to me when making requests, and reminded him he demanded that I toss it all in boxes, but he did not tell me to be gentle in doing so. I hung up on him and proceeded to enjoy my celebratory glass of wine that evening, hoping that he was enjoying the shattered remains. I can't help but agree with this person, asking and demanding, they're two completely different ways to go about doing something, and if you demand something of somebody, don't really expect them to go above and beyond to ensure that it's done proper. And our final one is from Fetzer Rain. So I worked security for a major military contractor at one point. Our supervisor liked using our random search number as a tool for punishment for perceived grievances with us. Normally our search number was something around 15 to 25, meaning we would only pull over and search every 15th car and every contractor truck. It was very cold and very miserable in the mornings when we would suddenly have a couple hundred employees and contractors show up between 0500 and 0800. This day, our supervisor got upset when he came in at 0400 for his day shift. He was the 15th car. Deciding he must now ruin everyone else's day, even though we did our best to search his vehicle promptly, but completely so he couldn't say we weren't doing the searches completely, so he set the day shift number to 3. So we complied. There was only enough room for three cars or trucks to be pulled over at once, and once that was done, we would usually stop searches until the others were completed, keeping traffic moving. Not today. This time, we filled the search area, and then stopped traffic until all three vehicles were cleared. Then allow two cars through, pull over the third, allow two, pull third, allow two, pull third, stop all traffic, and start searches. We ended up with a line of cars waiting to get into the plant that went two miles long. It got so long, the local police got involved up the road as people were blocking traffic in some intersections. Then came the phone call from a three-star general that stuck in said traffic a mile up the road. Suddenly, we were called to cease all searches for the morning. I later heard that it had been a little too late to cancel the ridiculous searches and our major military contractor lost a billion dollar contract out of the deal. And that supervisor was initially going to be fired but negotiated his way to just being busted down to a regular guard. We were unions so he started the lowest on the seniority chart and got stuck working all the mandatory overtime and all the worst posts including the one he had made miserable that morning. Edit, I should have noted that two weeks later, I said the contract was negotiated after the company I worked for explained that the person responsible for the general's limousine being held up in traffic for almost an hour has been reassigned. No innocent jobs were lost in the making of this malicious compliance. Now I'll admit, I could be wrong, I have no experience with the military or being a military contractor, but I would assume that both of them, if you're given an order to do something, you kind of have to do it. But in this case, seeing that the person who made the order that fucked everything up had some massive comeuppance come to them and they didn't get away scot-free makes this malicious compliance that much juicier. Alright, that's enough maliciousness for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Malicious Compliance. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, Subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons and super thanks contributors. Have a great day and stay safe out there.